makeup process video. This, this isn't going to be like polished at all. You're going to be the only person who sees this. Eye Savior. I just caffeinated thing to tighten it up. It's late tonight. Going out after eight. Moisturizer. Now I did shave right before this very closely. Primer. Put just about that much in my hand. So the game changer for me is color correction. Really, the way that I started with makeup because you can tell that in the area that I've shaved, it's a slightly bluish color, and I've got this slightly red bit from, uh, from this bit of acne. So, I use these creams in the color correction palette. I just rub these on with my finger. Orange cotton goes where facial hair comes from. Green is the opposite of red, so the redness from the acne dot. Bridge in the nose. This other cheek. And this light yellow one is the opposite of the, the like bit of purple like I have at the edges of my eyes. All this goes under the foundation. I do my foundation with a brush. And then rub in. I start in part without the color correction so that way I don't really blend together the colors of paint too much. So like if I start on the left or right side of the chin or on the forehead, that usually does well for me. And I just remembered I forgot to put in my contacts, so I am going to be wearing glasses today. Which really lessen the effect of mascara, but they are helped. But it is a help to go ahead with the eyeliner so it can be seen. Now that I have an even layer of foundation all over my face, I do contour. And as I mentioned before, I use bronzer as the powder and then uh, my cream concealer as the, uh, as the highlight.
I usually start with the nose. Then temples. I find that this is the most important part for changing the head shape because uh, the shadows determine how your face is framed. And so by pushing this backwards and this backwards and this backwards and this backwards in this sort of cutting fo fashion, I can get a rounder head shape. I could go heart shaped if I shade it inwards like that, but I'm not into that. Next, highlight cheekbones. What I do is I purse my lips to kiss and then create suction in the mouth. I paint right on this line over the divot, over the dimple. Great. And to reduce the appearance of a double chin, vertical striping breaks up the shadows. One thing I have been doing recently for more even chin is to pre-blend that just a little bit. Chase with the cream concealer. Shape tape is a little bit lighter than my skin. Chin comes forward for a more pronounced angular look. The dots around the eyes get rid of any problems in blending and makes my foundation look better and um, makes me look more awake. And having the highlight stripe between the two shade stripes on the nose reduces nose width. Take the wet sponge. Squeeze it very hard. Because it should be damp, but not wet. And I start at the chin and work out to the sides. Any place where I see a sharp line needs more blending until it becomes a smooth shadow. Now when I smile, I have much more pronounced cheeks because this is highlighted and this is shaded. It even makes it look like I have dimples. And it slightly changes the, the shape of the ocular box. This comes a lot more with the eyeliner and the blush. Now I do like a shined appearance and I'm going to, to, to this uh, to this 50s night tonight. So I'm going to use this one with the gold as just an accent.
in all the same places that I would put that I did put the the shape tape highlighter. So who knows? Really make it look like it's coming to a, like a rounded button tip, you know? Been a little sharper. For the blush, I start here and I end up here. It lifts the shape of my face upwards. For gets and shiggles, I'm gonna curl my eyelashes anyway. Don't grip and pull. Grip, change angle, grip, change angle, grip, change angle. It's gonna be hard to see this. Very hard to perceive until I pull out and put on any mascara. Now eyeliner. I don't really trust the phone's the phone's camera to do this as a mirror, nor do I use my big mirror, because I really need a short focal length. So I'm gonna use the pocket mirror. My, from my eyelids, this is going to be a different view. First line goes along the eyelash line just to the end. Then, from where it ejects from the eyelash line, make a curved line up towards the brow. Then a line that curves down, then curves up, sinusoidal. Then fill in. And repeat for the other eye. I notice the difference in eye shape. Just the having the the cat eye makes it look like the corner of my eye goes down. And this corner goes up, whereas this one, this corner goes down, this one goes horizontal. It's a big difference.
Feels like this one's running out of ink. Good thing I have a spare. It's a little bit asymmetrical, but who gives a shit? Probably got, and we kind of didn't do the left one on camera. I think it looks a little bit better than the right one. Chalk it up to nerves. Never made one of these. Both sides of upper eyelashes. Under, over, over, under. Just makes those pop. And that's makeup. Last is lipstick. But real quick. That helps. I use the detail mirror for this. Now I go all the way out, but I don't go all the way in because Just a slight modification, I get that faded, chromatic, gradient liner look. Usually it looks a little bit better when I leave it to, to like go all day, but I'm leaving in just a few minutes now. For my hair to make a curl, I just have to squeeze it a bunch. Now, it has been a couple days since I last washed it, so it's at its most resistant and springy, but that's when it looks the most curly, but also the most greasy. So I'm going to have to shower tonight after the club.
And that's it. This is what I consider to be my signature look. Hope this helps.